Hey everybody, so uh, this is an update video on my uh, arbitrage alert calculator. So um, it ended up being a pretty big hit, I guess, for a tiny channel like mine. Um, 600 views over a few days, um, and I even had five people uh, actually send me Bitcoin or Litecoin uh, for the file. So, uh, so this is the follow-up video to that to kind of explain how it works and how you change certain things on it. And these are the four things that I'm going to cover, uh, so let's, let's get into it. So first, um, you need to know how the uh, the VLOOKUP area is set up because sometimes when it pulls the information into these sheets from uh, CoinMarketCap, uh, these move. So as you can see right now, Bitcoin is the top one on GDAX and it's in cell, um, it's in cell 51C, right? So that is right here. The VLOOKUP is for C51, but sometimes it'll change to like C52. And if that changes, then you can just go and change it here and drag it down for the other two. And it's the same for the other two. Because if you don't, you'll just get an error message here. Uh, but it's a really simple fix. Um, but it's something that you need to know how to do uh, in case something gets moved. And this is normally due to coin market cap moving things uh, on lines on the pages. So that's a pretty simple thing. Um, the second thing is uh, how to change refresh times on this base file. So how we do that is we go up to connections up here. So this first connection is for sheet one, just the coin market cap home, and that's to get these quotes, which is for the aggregate. And then connection one is for uh, Poloniex, connection two is for GDAX, and then connection three is for Kraken. I used to have one for uh, Bitfinex two, but I ended up not uh, taking advantage of that uh, opportunity. So how you change it is you just go to properties and you can change the refresh time to anything that you want. I just have it set to five cause it's kind of aggravating to have it, uh, to have it refresh every minute. But, um, obviously if you're doing active trading, it might be good to have it every minute. And you can also manually refresh anytime you want by clicking this button here. Um, you can just click the drop down and click refresh all, or just click that. Okay, so that's how you change the refresh times. So now let's look at how to do data gathering with the other file or how to specialize the type of data gathering that you want to do. So this was what I showed in the first video. Uh, and as I said, um, it copy pastes every, or at least how I set it up was to copy paste every minute what the profits were for each arbitrage square. And it did it for 180 minutes going all the way over to 180. So how that works is uh, it's a little bit of Excel VBA, which is extremely useful. And I'll just give you a quick overview of the code uh, that I used. Um, and keep in mind, I am no professional when it comes to VBA. I learned all this just offline, just looking it up, how to do it. Um, there's a lot of good, real good resources out there. So uh, I used a do while loop and do while X is less than 180. So I set, uh, I set it to be every one minute and I declared X to start at the first minute. So basically this is do all of this code down before it says loop every single minute, which means you know it's gonna do the copy paste thing every single minute until we get to 180 and then it's gonna stop. So do events, this is a code, this is code that means um, finish the refresh before we do anything else. And call refresh just basically means uh, refresh all of your connections, like I showed you earlier. It's to refresh all of these connections. It's, it's grayed out right now because the code's open. So it does that, and then it says range J6 through J32, which is right here, J6 down to J32. So that's the profits for uh, all nine uh, arbitrage squares. So it says to copy those, and then offset them one column. So this is rows, and this is columns, and we're offsetting them one column, so that means paste them here right but we do it as a variable so that way the next minute as opposed to offsetting them one column x is now going to be two due to this formula here so every iteration of this do while loop we're adding one to the variable x and in that way it always pastes it one column over so first it's one two three pretty obvious right and then this last part uh, is application dot wait so basically what this says is it's just wait before looping and uh, I set it to wait 57 seconds. And the reason I chose 57 seconds is because uh, I timed uh, a handful of refreshes because it has to refresh uh, all four data points. 
uh, I mean all four uh, data connections and those normally take about three seconds so I'm still I'm still putting a new set of data in roughly every three seconds because uh, 3 plus 57 gets me right to a minute which is how often I wanted to gather data so if you wanted to gather data for a longer period of time raise the 180 and if you wanted to do it less frequently than every minute change this uh, and this is obviously seconds minutes hours so that's how you do that um, the next thing that I wanted to show you was how to set up email alerts. So this is pretty cool. Um, if you don't want to be checking the prices all the time, but you still want to get an alert when something cool happens, maybe when uh, one of these profit, maybe maybe when one of these arbitrage squares uh, reaches a certain level, or when uh, a currency drops a certain percent in a day, or when a currency goes up a certain percentage in a day, um, you can set up email alerts for either of those, or for any type of thing. But uh, the two I'm going to show you reference uh, these values hitting a certain number or these values hitting a certain number. So uh, to set up these email alerts, it's also done using VBA. And keep in mind, we're, we're back in just the regular dashboard, not the data gathering one, as you can see. So uh, again, we're going to view the VBA code. And um, let's just look at the general for the worksheet real quick. So it's these two macros right here. Um, you can do the email alert through a macro, at least that's how I did it. That was the easiest way I found out how to do it. Um, so the first, the large daily change macro. And actually this is saying I37 through I52. Okay, so th this, this is just the ranges that we're looking at before applying these macros. But let's go step into these macros and see what the code is behind them. So for the large daily change macro, that's the one that will look at the large daily changer here. And if it's uh, below a certain percent, it's going to send an email. So your macros are located here. Large daily change macro. Step into. Okay. Oh, well, it needs to refresh, so I'm just going to give it a second here. Alrighty. Okay, so macros, large daily change macro. So um, if range J37 is less than negative 14. So let me actually drag this over here. So range J37. So J37, so what this is, is these come from the CoinMarketCap homepage, and this is the percent daily change. So this is the biggest loser of the top 15 currencies, I believe is what I set it up for. It's Waves. For some reason, it copies the name twice, but it doesn't matter too much. So basically, what this says is it says, if the value in cell J37 is less than negative 14, then... And this is to send the email alert. Um, I could go through and explain it all, but it's pretty easy to look up. Um, and this video is getting a little long. But basically, uh, it's just a simple if loop. If this is less, and, and if you want to change it to 20% or 30% or whatever, you when you want to get alerted, then um, that's how you do it. And you can set up the email you want to send it to. You can set up a whole ton of stuff. It's really a cool feature to be able to send email alerts when certain changes happen. So that's it for the large daily change macro. And then for the other macro is for the um, the uh, profits. I mean, is for the arbitrage squares. And that is this one. Oh my God, why is it doing that? Okay, so as you can see, it's the same thing. I have it set up to be if range G37, which is this one right here, which is the most profitable square, like you've seen in the other video, if that is greater than uh, range C52, which is this one, which I have is 2.1, obviously you can make it anything you want, or you can just put the steady state value here. For some reason I linked it to a cell. But basically, um, this is useful because 
if the if the arbitrage profitability is greater than two percent at least from all my personal trades that i did uh i and I, again this is only like 50 or 60 data points but the chance of me having a bad trade starting with a two percent profitability i i never had a negative trade so i always at least made a profit it was only on the trades where the largest percent profit was one percent or less or even 1.5 percent or less sometimes where you would have an even or a negative trade keep in mind this was only a handful of times as well but basically the more cushion you have when you start the less possibility the market is to move against you. So once again, uh, you can set this up to be anything you want, and then you can set up what the text you want to display in the email to be anything you want. So uh, those are the four things that I wanted to cover. Um, and thank you so much to the people who actually uh, paid me for my work. It was pretty cool to get actually paid for some, uh, some software that I made. Uh, and I hope that it ends up being profitable and useful to you uh, in your uh, journey with cryptocurrencies going forwards. And hey, Bitcoin's been killing it lately, which has been pretty, pretty awesome to see as well. So thanks for listening, guys. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. And if you do want the file, uh, I'm still selling it for uh, $5 of crypto. Uh, thanks for all the support and the views and the likes. Uh, have a good day.